Hi, welcome to Hubble's Universe Unfiltered. I'm Dr. Frank Summers of the Space Telescope Science Institute. Now, we've given this episode a little bit of a provocative title, but I want to say right up front that there's nothing wrong with the Hubble Space Telescope. Matter of fact, what we're going to show you is just how well it's really working. Now, the coma in the title of the episode doesn't refer to being comatose. It actually refers to the constellation Coma Berenices. Now, Coma Berenices isn't the most spectacular of constellations. It's really just three bright stars. And when I first looked at this image, I said, oh, well, here's one, two, three bright stars. Unfortunately, they're not in Coma Berenices. This is actually Vindi Matrix in Virgo. This is Cor Corioli in uh, Canis Finatici. And this one is De Nebula in Leo. So the three bright stars in this image aren't actually in the constellation Coma Berenices. So where is Coma Berenices? It's actually got these three bright stars, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma Berenices. If you can't see those, let me put some arrows next to them to try and show you off where it is. So they really are only what we call fourth magnitude stars, where first magnitude is the brightest, and then second magnitude is a little dimmer, and third magnitude, and the brightest stars in Coma are really only fourth magnitude stars. The only thing really visually interesting about the constellation is this cluster of stars. This cluster of stars is called Malat 111, and it's special because it's a relatively nearby cluster of stars. It contains, oh, about 40 stars, and there are only two other clusters of stars that are closer, so this is a very good cluster of stars to study. Now, although it's a relatively boring constellation, it does actually have an interesting story behind it. And the story goes back to this guy, Ptolemy. Now, Ptolemy was a Macedonian king of ancient Egypt. And I have to say, he's not the Ptolemy who was an astronomer. The, ast the Ptolemy who was an astronomer came about 400 years after this guy. This one is Ptolemy III, and he's famous for waging war against the Syrians. And he had a wife, and here is a bust of his wife, Berenice. And Berenice was famed for having beautiful, gorgeous long hair. However, she was very afraid that her husband was going to get killed in this war. So she pledged to the goddess Aphrodite that she would cut off her long hair if her husband returned home safely. Well, he did come home safely from the war, and she did as she pledged. She cut off her hair and put it in the temple of Aphrodite. However, during the festivities celebrating the victory, the hair disappeared from the temple. And this was a huge outrage and the temple priests were going to be sacrificed. And now here comes the cool part. For one of the few times in history, it's an astronomer to the rescue. Conan of Samos, the astronomer, stepped in and said, wait, 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 Aphrodite accepted your gift, and she loved it so much, she put it up into the sky as the constellation Coma Berenices. So, as you can see, Berenices is here depicted with short hair, not the very long hair she was famous for, because her hair is supposed to be up in the sky. Now, this is the stick figure of the constellation, and I gotta tell you, it doesn't say much in terms of hair to me, but if you have some kind of imagination, you can actually draw it in. And this is how Johannes Havelius depicted it in 1690. And so these are the three stars of Coma Berenices, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. And right next to Gamma is that clusters of stars, which I guess sort of represents the hair flowing back this way. This bright star up here would be Cor Coroli, as we saw in the previous image. And the other two bright stars would be down here, and it doesn't look like Havelius has depicted them. So it's kind of a neat uh, story behind the constellation because, you know, it's named after a person in, histori in historical uh, story, and an astronomer gets to play a, a significant part. But Astronomers are much more interested in a different thing about Coma. It's this region right up here in the top of Coma. And when you look in very close, you see this. Now, this is, to an astronomer, obviously a star. You see the big spikes here. And this is another star. So these are two stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Everything else here, all of these fuzzy blobs, are other galaxies. Now, all of these fuzzy blobs, this is a giant cluster of galaxies. Just like we saw stars can cluster, galaxies can also cluster. So if a large galaxy like our Milky Way has about 100 billion stars, and you've got about 1,000 galaxies here, 
Really what you're looking at is about a quadrillion stars. And that's million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. That's a lot of stuff here. Now for astronomers, there are two important things about the Coma Cluster. One is, first of all, it's a rich cluster, but it's a relatively nearby cluster, and that makes it easier to study. But it's not like the Virgo Cluster. The Virgo Cluster is actually a little bit closer than Coma, but it's so close that it's spread out across a wide swath of the sky, and it's kind of hard to study because you have to look in so many different places. With Coma, you can see that you can relatively get an awful lot of galaxies in one image. The other reason that makes Coma an interesting galaxy cluster to study is that it's near the galactic north pole. Now, our Milky Way galaxy is a spiral galaxy, and it's relatively pancake-shaped, okay? And if you're looking out through the pancake, there's a lot of gas and dust that's blocking your view. But if instead you look perpendicular to the pancake, to the north or south, to the poles, you can then look through much less gas and dust when you want to study things that are outside our galaxy. For instance, other galaxies. So having a cluster of galaxies that's located near the galactic north pole makes it a really well-studied cluster, and so we've studied Coma in, in, in amazing detail.